Let's work on this problem. A ball rolls off a cliff at a horizontal speed of 15 meters per second and lands 60 meters away from the base of the cliff. How long does it take for the ball to hit the ground? Well, let's begin by drawing a picture. So we have a cliff and the ball rolls horizontally off the cliff and then it's gonna hit the ground. So we know the initial speed is 15 meters per second. We also know the range, which is the horizontal displacement of the ball, just when it hits the ground, and that is 60 meters. How can we find the time? Well, it helps to know this formula. The range is equal to Vxt. And for this particular trajectory, when the ball is moving horizontally, V initial is equal to Vx at that point. Keep in mind, Vx is V cosine theta. And for an object moving in a positive x direction, the angle is 0. Cosine of 0 degrees is 1. So Vx equals V initial at 0 degrees. So we could say for at that particular point, that is at point A, Vx is the same as V initial, so that's 15 meters per second, and we need to calculate T. The range is 60. So to calculate T, we need to divide both sides by 15. So T is going to be the range divided by Vx. 60 divided by 15, that gives us 4 seconds. So that's the answer for part A. That's how long it will take for the ball to hit the ground. Now, part B, how high is the cliff? If we know the time it takes to hit the ground, we could use this formula to calculate the height of the cliff. It's 1 half gt squared, so g is 9.8, t is 4. 4 squared is 16. Half of that is 8. 8 times 9.8 will give us a height of 78.4 meters. Now, there's another equation that you could use to get the height directly. Here it is. For this particular trajectory, the height is equal to the square of the range times the gravitational acceleration divided by 2 v initial squared. So in this example, the range is 60. g is 9.8. The initial speed is 15. 60 squared is 3,600 times 9.8. That's, if we do it step by step, that's 35,280. 15 squared is 225 divided by 2, that's 450. When you divide 35 to 80 by 450, it will give you the same answer, 78.4 meters. So that's how you can calculate the height of the cliff for this particular trajectory. If you know the time it takes for the ball to hit the ground, use this formula. If you know the range and the initial speed, you could use that formula. Now, let's move on to number two. A ball is kicked at an angle of 30 degrees from a cliff with an initial speed of 40 meters per second. The ball hits the ground 12 seconds later. How high is the cliff? So let's draw a picture. So here we have a ball. It's going to be kicked from the cliff so it's going to go up, and then it's going to go back down. We can call this point A, point B, point C. Now, we know that it's kicked at an angle of 30 degrees, and the initial speed is 40 meters per second. We know the time it takes to hit the ground. So at point C, T is 12 seconds later. With this information, how can we determine the height of the cliff?
feel free to pause the video if you want to. The height of the cliff is basically the absolute value of the vertical displacement. Going from A to C, dy will be negative. But notice that dy is the same as h. It's just that the height of the cliff will be given a positive value. So we need to calculate dy and make it positive. dy is equal to vy initial t, which is v initial sine theta t, and then minus 1 half gt squared. I have a formula sheet in the description section below where you can access all the formulas that you saw in problem number one in addition to this problem. So let's go ahead and calculate the height. So V initial is 40, and then it's sine 30 multiplied by the time, which is 12 seconds minus one half. G is 9.8 times T squared or 12 squared. Sine 30 is equal to a half. Half of 40 is 20. 20 times 12, if you have 12 $20 bills, that's $240. 12 squared is 144, half of that is 72 times 9.8. That's going to be 705.6. 240 minus 705.6 is negative 465.6. So if we were looking for the vertical displacement, dy, it would be negative 465.6. But because you want to find the height of the cliff, we're going to make it positive 465.6. And it makes sense why dy will be negative because going from A to C, you're going down in the y direction. The net displacement is negative in the y direction. So this is the answer for part A, positive 465.6 meters. That's how high the cliff is. Now, let's move on to part B. What is the final speed of the ball just before it hits the ground? So we could use this formula to calculate the final speed. Vf is going to be the square root of V initial squared minus 2gt V initial sine theta plus gt squared. So v initial is 40 minus 2 times g, g is 9.8, t is 12, v initial is 40 again, times sine 30 plus gt. So 9.8 times 12 squared. So go ahead and plug that in. Now I got 103 Point six meters per second. By the way, you could find that formula in the formula sheet down in the description section below for those of you who want to get the answer directly. I'm going to show you another way to get this answer. But because this is a big formula, I'm going to double check my work to make sure that I plugged in everything correctly. Because if you miss one number, that's it. The whole problem you get the whole thing wrong. All right, so I got the same value when I tried it a second time. But now let's confirm this answer using another method. Another way to find V final is we need to find VX final and VY final. The good thing about VX is for projectile motion, there's no acceleration in the X direction. So VX at point A is the same as VX at point C. 
vx is just going to be v initial cosine theta. So that's going to be 40 cosine 30. And we're going to get 34.64 meters per second. Now, Vy has acceleration, so it changes. So this is going to be Vy initial. By the way, let's put Vy final here. Vy initial minus GT. And Vy initial is V initial sine theta minus GT. So you could find this formula in the formula sheet down below. V initial is 40, and then sine of 30 degrees minus 9.8 times 12. Now this will give us negative 97.6. And it makes sense why it's negative. As the ball moves from A to C, it's moving in a positive X direction. So that's why Vx is positive, but it's going down towards C. So that's why Vy is negative. So now that we have Vx final and Vy final, we could find V final using the Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be Vx squared plus Vy final squared. Vx initial and Vy fi Vx final, they're the same, since there's no acceleration in the x direction. You don't have to worry about the negative sign for Vy, because once you square it, it's going to be positive. So this gives me the same answer of 103.6 meters per second. So anytime you need to calculate the final speed, you can you know, use any one of these two methods. You could find Vx final, Vy final, and then plug it into this equation, or you could use the other formula. For the other formula, remember you need three things. You need the initial speed, the launch angle, and the time it takes at the ground. With those three things, you can calculate the final speed at point C. So that's basically it for this video. By the way, for those of you who want those formulas where you can get the answer directly, feel free to check out uh, the links in the description section below if you want access to that formula sheet. Thanks for watching.